functions. If you'll notice, if you looked at, if you made like actual notes about them all, none of them had any addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Rational function had one over that thing. It's kind of like division. So that's the closest we can do it. Um, but they didn't, they weren't like multiplying, adding, subtracting, or dividing by a number. If that makes any sense. Um, rational function is technically x to the negative first. And that's why I did that, but and it's already trying to prove me the liar. Right? So they are like, um, you guys are here. You ever notice, like, I'm going to call it like the patriarch, but it's like the great ancestor of all each of these functions. Have you ever been in a family, or you, at some point you were in a family, a genetic family, you'll notice they all, you guys all have something in common, shape, shape wise. Like, Every guy on my dad's side of the family, this is my example, but it's hard to see with an S, has my chin, which um, uh, is a cleft chin. It's like the, I like it better when it's called a superhero chin, although I have had people laugh and call it a butt chin. Oh, that chin. Yes. The superhero chin makes things sound a whole lot better. But, and, and like, we also have like the same type of jaw lines. It's kind of like a square jaw line that we all have. Every single guy in our family, exactly the same. Now we all have different things. Some of us have different haircuts. A lot of us are bald. Not all, but there's a decent proportion. Um, but we all, every single one of us have the exact same chin. It's like my, my wife, like, no, yeah, my wife is called the Hemingway chin. All right. We all look different. My dad's shorter than me, not nearly as strong. I'm not that I'm strong anymore, but I, there was a time when I was very athletic. Um, when I stopped wrestling, I stopped lifting, and then I it all went away. Um, I have uncles on stuff that are huge in like all different ways possible, both fat and strong. They look different, but we all have the exact same chin and jawline. Every single one of us. That's what makes us recognizable whenever we go to other families or like when, we're, when if you ever you guys ever been to a big family reunion and like there's lots of people there and you don't know who's really part of the family and who just married in you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. well at the hemingway family reunions you know who's genetically a hemingway and who's just married into the family off their chins and jaw lines we just know we're looking like yep he's ours <laughs> he, he is with someone else. Whose daughter is he with? You know, that's literally how we know. Um, because it's not as common everywhere else. Like, you know, you can recognize it really, really well. We have the same exact thing on my mom's side of the family, but um, there's also come to a point name. My mom's name, his maiden name was Dufresne, which is okay because you guys can't spell it anyways. Um, my my wife likes to call it the Dufresne Terrier. Those of you that know vocabulary can laugh. You already know what Terrier is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we all have large ones for our size. <laughs> I hide mine as best as I can, but there's not a whole lot I can do to it. But like she was like, that's the Dufresne Terrier. And especially she got mad like. My son doesn't have it, but at times he does. Like right now, he is a gross person. He's really weird to be about it. But like, my, my wife will be like, This is why we have to get. She, she gets mad. She's like, You're really skinny, but I have to get a bigger pair of jeans, waist size, just to get it over the Dufresne derriere. And I'm like, I used to be skinnier and I was like bulkier in places, if that makes any sense. At one time, I really was just a college. When we were first dating and like getting married, I was a college wrestler and I was way stronger and i had a much smaller waistline my hips and my shoulders were noticeably bigger you can imagine that so like i had to have like like a 32 inch jeans like waistline but then i had to get like a size 30 belt and like i would be like almost as small because like my waist was really skinny up here you know, like even here was really skinny, but here not so much because I was 
what was I squatting then? I was actually lifting regularly. Squatting like just below 400. And I was like noticeably strong, but like I had a big butt. <laughs> All right, but everyone in my family, go to a new friend family reunion, and you can tell who married in and who because, like, men, women, all of us, no matter what size you are, even like I'm still basically skinny, but proportion wise, I would have it there. And the ones that weren't so skinny, you would still be like, you know, watch out whenever any one of my mom's side of the family backs up because <laughs> someone's getting taken out. <laughs> right? And that's just the way it was. So, like, that's like our characteristic. So, everyone sees a characteristic. All of these functions have a characteristic. They can be moved, they can be contorted slightly, like changed a little bit. And we're going to talk like the whole rest of this chapter, not the whole rest of the chapter. The major second part of this chapter is how they can get changed. So, the first, but first, you have to know who the ancestors are. Let me look at their characteristics. So we're going to see all the ways they can get changed. So I'm going to go back through them and point out things that we can recognize in this. So that was supposed to be a straight line. Caldwell would say all lines are straight. And let's do another color. So the graph is going to be in white. I don't know if you guys can. Yeah, you guys can see it pretty good. What function is that? Linear. That's linear. He's a line. It says line in it, right? Um, and every single line is a relative of this, all right? And I'm going to pretty much try my best never to write y equals anymore. But any x, anything being multiplied, added or subtracted, just say so you know, adding, subtracting will just move that line up, down, left, or right. And multiplying will just change how steep it is all the way down to the other side, all right? Um, but every other thing from there is just a line. It's all linear. Every single one. It's straight, any direction, anywhere left or right, or up or down. They're all lines. They're the only functions that go straight like that. Second thing was absolute value. I already answered that, and I meant to ask that. He's a B. Let's kind of remember absolute value is a B. Right. He is a line. He would be a linear, except he got broken at one point and the other part flipped up. All right. Absolute value is like that thing that's always happy. He's got victory, B for victory. He's always winning. And if you're always winning, you're always happy. You're always positive. Right. All those things kind of stick in my mind. Now I'm also going to kind of show you how they all went from one family to the other because you could actually, there's, there's some functions that get close to one or the other, but you have to see how they're built. That's what that um, that whole video does. He goes from one function to the other. But linear became that by breaking off that line and setting it up. Now, we're going to kind of go into like the whole biology thing. Linear's had a split. Some of them went that way. These guys could have all started breaking, and that's how you get the step function. See how many I can pick here. And I'm just going to do a sort of rough grab. He's the only one that has steps like that. He was a line. You'll notice you kind of see like a line in there, kind of going through the center of all those or one of the endpoints of all of them. But it's like a whole bunch of pieces broke, either fell down or flipped up. I'm not sure which way you want to visualize it. Doesn't really matter. And he kind of looks like that because I have a line and then a flat spot. So he really is platforms. And whenever I do this, he gets caught up ways to remember these things. Whenever I'm trying to remember, like, oh, that's the symbol for this, I'm going to try and draw this big. Hopefully, it'll show up in the video. I have that going on. Yeah, you can kind of see it. In my mind, every single time, I see these platforms and I think video games. If you have never played video games before, I don't know whether I should congratulate you or feel sorry for you, but either congratulations or condolences. I always picture 
the guys jumping from one platform to the other. And this thing right here literally looks like a platform. X is my video game character, and he's jumping from one platform to the other. He can have multiplication out here. You can have addition, subtraction, all that stuff going on. All that's going to do is move the platform, maybe make the level harder or easier, right? But no matter what, he's just going to keep on jumping. What's that one like arcade game that's in like every single group? The, the one where you're that like pea shooter looking thing and you got to jump up on each platform, but you have to keep going, otherwise, the bottom's going to get you or the platform's going to get you. Mario Brothers. Listen, I Mario Kart. Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's just> <laughs> I mean, the little white lines remind me of Pong, but that's the wrong one. But it, yes, that's the wrong. I mean, it's not quite the same. I don't see it. Listen, I'm I'm just. He's trying to say wait. I was starting to get out of video games when Sonic the Hedgehog was new. Really? Yeah. Have you successfully gotten out of video games? No. Um, the only thing that kills me is if it's summertime, it's raining, and my kids are stuck in the house with me. So it has to be a day or the day. My life is working. It has to be raining. It has to be nothing going on. I have to be a little bit on the board side, and my kids will be driving me nuts or something like that. And then I'll be like, all right, so I'll go upstairs. And then I can usually get them to start playing with me. They think it's exciting because I'm playing with them. And then I'll slip out. And I'm no longer playing with them. So it's like, what, 15 minutes a month, maybe? <laughs> what game do you play with them? What a, um, my daughter likes Minecraft now. <laughs> um, but it's mainly because she likes seeing the animals. And she likes she likes making pink sheep. So that's, I'll let her longer. Very rare spot. Uh, I'll, you die though. Yeah, I know, but they can spawn naturally. Just yeah, I know. Um, and she likes like making like like getting sheep of different colors together so they make like a red one and a blue one will make a purple baby and things like that. <laughs> She thinks that's awesome. Um, the other one? <laughs> I used, I haven't done this in a while. I used to be able to get my son sometimes about four or six and get him to start racing cars with me. And then he just happened to hand the control over to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> but he likes cars a lot. That's helpful. Or is a Horizon 3 is what it's at? Well, I'm gonna have at least somehow. Right, 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 right. um, he likes playing like a lot of like the little first person shooter games, but I am not as good at them as I was when I was that <laughs> tall. So I think I played like I played like Fortnite with him twice when he was like in middle school, and I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm not. Bro, get Fortnite. No, I, I don't play like a lot though. Like I was playing the game, I was playing like one of my friends were like, hey, we're about to get All Let's get back. No, we're set. Uh, quadratic function. This one should be, this is the very first function we're going to see and deal with that is curved. So all of these have lines. They've all been like really, really changed. Regular straight lines, nothing going on. Line with a big, huge bend in the middle, right? It's got to, it's got to turn. A whole bunch of broken lines. This guy here is the very first curve. He's the quadratic. And he's doing like a touchdown. Um, I mean, we know he's the squaring function. He's going to be f of x equals x squared. Um, Here's how I remember them. Now, like you have to, like you guys can talk and work together, and I will literally use memory keys and cues that you use so that it makes sense to you because I already know it doesn't matter if I can do things that help me remember. I'm just going to show you things that I've done. Also, it's really helpful to see these as many different ways as possible so that it's easier to memorize because I, and I'm like this struggling. I'm not say struggling. I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you because. I'm throwing a lot of this stuff at you like this because studying in math is not normal, right? 
really just learn how to solve the problem. There's no way to know what number is going to come at you. So there's nothing really to study, like traditional study. You can do it or you can't. All right. This is actual memorization, which means there's a lot of like, I spend a lot more time talking about it because that's different for me. Usually I'm like, here's the skill. Who cares what numbers come? Just react and knock it out. So I'm going to throw a lot of things that go through my mind at this. And I'm not a memorization person. I don't like to see the list and say, learn it. I can't, because I can't do that. So here's what I remember. Absolute value has two lines and it's symbol, it's little equation is literally X with two lines. Don't with me on that. However, when the two is an exponent, I have two sides, because this guy really has two sides. He goes up here and he goes up here, right? But they're curvy. This is where your handwriting is going to play a part. Like the number two is curvy. It's not two lines, because that's two lines. I'm looking straight. Absolute value is two lines. They're both straight. And the simple the equation is x with two lines, right? Mm -hmm. X squared is the same thing, except now these long thing lines are curves. And they get the number two, because when I write a two, I use curves. Does that make sense? If you do this number two, I'm, I'm ruined for you. I don't know. You're <laughs> I can't help you now. Your handwriting is going to make the, your your fancy your fancy or not so fancy handwriting is going to make this a mess. But if you do curvy twos, that will help me hopefully make sense. Is there's two pieces and they're curvy and they're both like the worst creepy. <laughs> That's not good. Um, and there's two sides. They're like that. It's a quadratic. It's square. They're all going to get bigger. All that good stuff. Here's where you get what that is. If you think that's silly and stupid, just wait. There's more. Uh, one, two, three, four. The next one goes, yeah, you guys can see this, is the cubic function. I did this on the board yesterday. This is x cubed. Well, f of x equals x cubed. And here's what I remember. It's a cubic. All right, these are the thing cubed. I, for some reason, when I hear cubic, and this is because I got it to stick in my head. I remember cowboy, cubic cowboy. And this is how I remember this. Anybody here ever seen an old West movie where they do like the little uh, duel, the shootout duel thing, whatever? I see this guy, I picture a man holding his gun in the air, his other hand over here. So like he's both got the duels already ready. The one where I've seen them where they like, they do the 10 paces with the gun held up like this and they turn and shoot. Done that. I've seen that. And I also did the whole like we're just standing here in a standoff. We're like, we're ready. You know what I'm talking about? They have the holster and they got to pull out. Mm -hmm. Either type of standoff. This cowboy can handle either of them. He has his gun up ready to count and he has his hand out here by his holster because he is like the total cowboy. He's the cubic function. He can do anything. It was literally what he says. There's one hand out here, one hand up here, and he's there, he's ready. And that's the cubic, and that's how I remember them. Right? Boom. I'm looking for a good one. I'm going to do this slightly out of order just because I already talked about the, hip, the cubic. You ready? The cube root, that guy goes straight with the cowboy. So I have the cowboy, he's the cubic, he's cubed, right? Cubed cowboy, cubed cowboy. They both start with C, that should make sense. The cube root, that cowboy lost. He got, he was getting ready to do the duel. So I'm like, this might not work on the video, but I'm here, I'm the cowboy. I lost in the duel, so I got, but I got shot. The only thing that makes this work though is technically I fell forward. So I must have gotten shot in the back or something because the cube root feels like that. Oh, oh, he, ooh. So he died. <laughs> right? He was here. I just went completely out He must have hit you one of the stretches. Are people leaving? No, people are. Oh. It's 9 30 6. They shouldn't be leaving. It's not even close to time. They must be left. How did he left? I was about to say, we don't leave until close to like 9.50. It's like 9.50 biology lab. 
chemistry. Or chemistry. It's Miss Lawson's lab class. That's what I mean. Probably not. I, well, chemistry is right there. So that yeah, but, but Ms. Lawson has a chemistry class this semester. So uh, I, don't, I don't know. Things are different. But y'all get Q, and then he goes back to his roots because he died, and they bury him where the roots are. I'm going to fall down. All right, you guys on video missed it because I ducked out of the screen. Ha ha, you don't miss, I don't, you don't know what you can see because I was looking into the ground. Oh, that's horrible. <sighs> Square root, same kind of thing. One, two. I don't have a good one yet. Yeah, I always do like that to kind of show like he goes up and he gets cut off right there. He gets cut off. Um, but he is the square that's fallen down, except he lost his bottom half. He had to in order to be a function. Um, you guys are welcome to come up with ideas. It's the square root of those. Now he does kind of look like the square root symbol. Y'all saw like this guy going in here, especially if you have bad handwriting, you do it fast. Right? Bad is missing, but he's that guy. Right? The graph looks like the symbol on it. Don't get confused with the cubic, who also has the symbol, but he has a three up there. Anyone that has awesome ideas are welcome to share them. Or you could be selfish and just keep your eight in yourself and not let anyone else know what how what you're doing to make it be awesome. I mean, mine's pretty garbage, so I'm not gonna. I had a cowboy getting shot. Ooh, that one makes sense. I mean, okay. Yeah. Uh, I've heard more bad ideas than good ideas. I haven't laughed at any flags, not true. And I was about to say, I don't usually laugh at the bad ideas. And like you have to have some really bad ideas and work with them before you start coming up with new ideas. There's a secret about this that I most people don't really recognize. The whole like coming up with a different story for every single thing to help you remember it is awesome. If you're the one that came up with the story because you actually usually learn the thing as you're creating the story. Like in order to come up with a cubic and then he got shot and fell down to come to key root, the process of like thinking about that and like making that happen and making the connection makes you never forget those things. Being told that that's the way you memorize them, it's like rolling the dice. It might work short term, it might work longer term, but if you don't actually create your own memory devices, it's going to be really hard for them to really stick. Now, some of them will always stick. Like, That's not quite true. I was gonna come up with like ones that I already had, but they were ones that I technically created on some level. Um, usually, even if it's like this, if it is someone else's idea, if you build off it in some way and make it a story around it or some extra thought about it, you will know them forever. For instance, had one of the periodic table when I was in elementary school, fifth grade, I think. So fifth grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, fourth grade. I think it was fifth grade. We had to learn the entire period of periodic table. Which Ms. Carpenter has told me has since changed, which makes me really feel old. Wait, huh? The periodic table from the 20th century, not the periodic table now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> you know, new new stuff is just. Different. I know, I understand, but I I like to think that I'm younger than my haircut. In my mind, I don't have to see myself. In my mind, I'm like still 20 something and young. Huh? No. Huh? I know. It's okay. All right. Oh, no. So, um, and I don't even care about like technically being old. It's the fact that things change that I have learned that bothers me. Like I knew something as a fact. This is what it was. And then when that's no longer a fact anymore, I'm like, like, well, now I was alive. Pluto was a planet. And then it wasn't. And now it is. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, it's back to being a planet now? I don't know. I heard that somewhere. It's or maybe I rejected the news. One of the two. I've been rejecting the news. I don't remember if it's officially back or if I just said I'm done with it not being a planet. Period. I'm gonna call it one. It was because I do that sometimes. So it's one of those two. Yeah. I don't want to talk about Pluto. All right. 
But I remember here on the table, this is just how you learn to memorize stuff, all right? My fifth grade teacher, we had to remember here on the table, she got AU. She, and this was a long time ago. Mr. T was well known. Y'all know who Mr. T is? Oh, okay, that's something. From AP? Yes. Yes. You yes. wear all types of gold chains and all that good stuff? Yeah. That's not the, 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 no, that's not the original Mr. T, but yes. I dressed up in the window. How long? There's a different. Okay. No. So the original Mr. T. I'm just gonna go with that. I guess. Yes. He I would know. wear like he had like a little mohawk type thing, and he was kind of a little bald thing going on and goatee, and he had lots and lots of chains. Well, when he was like really really popular, a lot of the kids, no matter what, would want to like wear tons of gold chains just like Mr. T. And juvenile delinquents, every now and then, would like. Instead of like trying to like pull out a gun and like mug you for your wallet, they just take all your gold chains. Because A, they're easy to grab. And B, I don't know. Um, they're, they're easy to grab. I had I had something, I lost it. I'm old, oh, remember? Not the one exactly. But they were like, you can get my rock. So my science teacher said, hey, the periodic table symbol for gold is AU. Did you like everybody likes to wear gold chains and all that good stuff? Just think, you're walking down, somebody comes by and snatches your chains, and you go, hey, you, give me back my gold. Nah, bro. Right? You it was like, silly and stupid. You, Remember, I was in fifth grade. I mean, but that, that would work. I understand. <laughs> but, like, you know, like, sometimes you say something dumb as you're getting ready to act on it in a different way? Yeah. That would just, like, feel like that's your natural reaction. Just say, hey, you give me my gold. And then you go after them, and then you, like, actually get it back with them. Nah. So, in my mind, this was early, early 90s, and, like, Say this. Huh. Hip hop was just starting to switch over to gangster rap. All right. Like that was like true culture. That's where this was. In my mind, I took her AU gold thing and I was like, oh. and the symbol for silver is AG. So in my mind, I had this whole little skit going on in my mind. Maybe maybe our table was thick. I thought <laughs> AG. I thought like in a an OG, like an original, like wearing all the gold chains and walk, walk by, right? Somebody snatches his gold and he goes, hey, you give me my gold. And he goes after him. And then I was thinking this new age punk that thinks he's like one of those really cool guys. He can't afford gold because he's fake. Oh, no, no, no. He's fake. He's not really like the old school. Like I liked hip hop a whole lot. I didn't like being a gangster rap for a long time. And I would think he's just wearing silver because he wants to be as cool as the old guys, but he's not. So he'd be walking, and someone would snatch his silver chains. He'd go, AG, give me my silver. And then I remember AU was gold, and AG was silver. If I have like that long, drawn out story, for like, I had it for the entire PR day. Some of them, not so great, which is why I forgot them. Some of them were like, really good and drawn out. The more work I put into the story, the better I actually remember it. All right, that's, if you ever get stuck having to memorize stuff, and you are not good at just making a list of memorizing, that's kind of what you have to do. And they have found the strongest memory key is like making a story about stuff. So if you make a story, like my cubic goes as a, as a cowboy, he's ready for all types of gunfights, but cubic brute shot him. In the cubic brute part, he got shot and he fell down, right? He fell down. I always know this and I'll be able to grab them. That guy's actually kind of tricky to grab, but like I just, I do my cowboy at any point in time. And I can do my cowboy that's fallen at any point in time. And I remember all those other details that come in because that becomes more personal to me and it makes it easier to remember. Ah, all right. So even if you don't come up with a good story, if you're mentally trying to come up with a good story and like working things through with it, you will have these down in like no time and be really, really awesome at <laughs> I don't have a good one for square root other than he looks a lot like the symbol. Nah, he got shot in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the spinal cord, so now he can't feel his legs. So that's why. So his legs are gone. I, shot the spinal. I can't feel my legs because <laughs> Bubba, they're not there anymore. <laughs> Major Pain was a great movie. What? Two, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Before I got my education degree and I wasn't 100 percent sure about it, I substituted a whole lot. Like I had like what I always make sure that either all my classes were on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or they were all on Tuesday, Thursday, so I could sub on the other days because I could like feel up experience. I was like one of the few subs that would go to CLC. So like they they get a sub there that is actually somewhat competent and they will like call them all the time. So pretty much like one semester, every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I would just go to CLC. And I'd be like, I didn't even find out just who am I today? Because I knew I was going to be somebody. Because if you think about like the kids that go to CLC, if you don't have to be there, you're not going to be there. So they would use up all their sick days. Every single time I substituted for ROTC, the lesson plan was watch make your pain. <laughs> every single time. That's not quite true. It was either watch, it was either watch make your pain or we trust you. Take them to their, they have like a little rink and weight room type thing. It's like take them to the weight room, room, make sure they like lift and then um, make them run and walk. Because those guys, you could like motivate them to lift. You couldn't motivate them to play basketball without fighting, but you could motivate them to lift. <laughs> That's kind of yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. And like, I'm like, look, we can play basketball, but I don't want to do any write ups today. And I don't want to have to like, close my eyes to what you guys are doing. So we're going to lift and run. And they were okay with that. So that worked. Or we sit and watch Major Bay. Um, did the square root one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I have the exponential. Here's a couple things. My internet is not going to be good. A, the bottom of the E does kind of like the shape thing. In fact, even like the middle of the E does kind of the same shape as the graph because he's this. He just goes up. All right, I had that. That worked for me. Also, I think of his, he is excited. If he is the beginning of a roller coaster. Like every single roller coaster in the world, this is not 100% true, but close, begins with going up a big hill. So I think, okay, he is doing the exciting part of the roller coaster. For me, that's like the best part, like watching it because A, I'm like, I said, I am naturally scared of heights. Hold on. But at the same time, I love pushing myself and I like freaking myself out. Oh god. So I love the beginning part of the roller coaster because that like really freaks me out. And like I enjoy like conquering that and getting over it. Um like the uh the yeah, Carolyn's is it the Fury? The one that's the really tall one at the beginning? Yeah, yeah that's the tallest yeah. one. No. I, I love going <laughs> off that thing. I do too. Yeah, it's five feet off. Yeah, it's five feet off. Yeah, my phone's not on my pocket. Oh, yeah. but I like, like, I get so free. Like, I literally, like, if you put me on top of like this pudding, which isn't that tall, I would like be shaking because, like, I'm that scared of heights. But you put me on the Fury, and like, the fact that I'm strapped down and I have to face it is. Awesome, because I was such an adrenaline rush. By the time I'm at, like, like I've probably gone through all the calories everyone says for the entire ride, just getting up the top of the hill. It goes a little slow. I'd be like, oh my. Yeah, because that's like the anticipation. That's like the oh. so like I will be like uh, freaking out, but facing it and dealing with it all the whole way up. This is great, and then after, everything else is that's just downhill. It's easy. I'm just did going you, down. No, did you try the one? I think it's called the Accelerator. I could be wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like the one, the one where it starts with you going backwards and then you slingshot forward and you go through the whole loop, that's and then it ends up stopping you. And you like, why don't we stop? Oh. And then it slings you backwards. Yeah, again. That, that's a nighthawk. Oh, that's Nighthawk? Yeah, okay. no, Nighthawk. It, it, it was one of the two. Or is it the, this is the, the Cobra? The Cobra is where you go yeah, backwards. Yeah, that's the Cobra. Yeah, the Carolina Cobra. Bro, listen. All that one I like, too. It's because, because then, like, then you're going backwards and you can see everything you're going to be able to deal with. Yeah. Like that, again, I love, like, all that stuff. Good thing that. That yeah. pushes me so much. Afterburner is, like, the top gun one where your feet are dangling. Yeah, and then the Nighthawk where you're that one's, down. That one's fun. I mean... Oh, I jumped off my roof into a three foot pool. But all, <laughs> all of those things, things, I think right here, excited is an exponential function. And it's for me, the most exciting part is the going up stuff. Everything after that, that's just getting down. But I mean, you can literally, like, like the drop zone, I think, is absolutely awesome, except because it just goes up and down. But like, the whole slow going up thing. And I'm really weird. Like we, I don't know if they still. They still have like that big tower thing that just goes up. Like they're like the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. the whole thing. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. That right there is just as exciting to me as the purity is. Because yeah. all I care about is getting up really, really high. And if it's slow and drawn out, <laughs> it'll like freak me out. No. What if it got stuck? <laughs> Yo, my <laughs> body would be in a huge panic. But you like, I like get a huge rush out of like facing my peers. It's just like back when I would wrestle, I always like would get most thrilled about having someone that was way better than me, way stronger. And I was like, serious risk of getting hurt. I'm like, that, that's what I want. That's how I feel about fighting. I have to get hit a couple of times in order for me to yeah. So all of that, all of those thoughts go through my head every time I see that function. And any version of it, I'm like, go one for this one. <laughs> go for this. Um, way back when like the Carolina Cyclone, you know the Cyclone? Yes. Yeah, um, way back when that was still one of the bigger yeah. rides, we got stuck at the top of the hill. Oh, freaking dang. <laughs> I was like, that was like the most thrilling thing for me in like the world. I was like there and I was like, I can see all this stuff. And now I'm gonna, and the roller coaster's broken. And they're not gonna, they didn't just let us down. They were like, yeah, y'all be good enough to go. And they just got it going enough. So I, I had that thrill going on. It was awesome. Um, that type of stuff, like, I really, like, really love doing that. Oh, have, yeah. you, have you done that one where you get in that, like, spear thing and then they slingshot you on the cables and then you're just going back? Oh, the, the big giant swing thing? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, but so, but sometimes they'll take you uh basically like perpendicular first, like this, and then they'll slingshot you, and then they'll slingshot you up and down. I don't know. I haven't been on that since because like that's the thing where like they can strap like like two or three people on it. Yeah, and that's it. Nine times out of ten, it's two. That that's yeah. where you see all the videos where um, they're like, oh, this bolt just came out, and you can freak them out, and then they it's just scream. um I not since I was in high school. So I don't know whether because that's how long it's been since I've been with someone that I was like, yeah, that sounds good all day. And I remember the one I've only done like we did like three times a day, but the kid I was with just got freaked out every single time. And I was like, you can't want to get on this with me again. You don't like it. I like it. I think it was awesome. Um, yes, it freaked me out, but like you wouldn't know because like when I start getting freaked out again, I end up looking really, really happy. And once we and again, it was just all the anticipation. Just the, the first time they lifted us up was the only time I was freaking out. Once they let us go and we're flying, it's all downhill. Then I was fine. And I was like, oh, going, I don't care how fast we get towards the ground, it's getting up that bump. <laughs> I don't think the big roller coasters make my stomach drop. Like the one being like 80, 90. My stomach doesn't drop. That I much. have like no the effect. smaller ones, it does. Yeah, I mean, for real. Know. What? Like the yeah. Trump, like what the boom, the wood. Like the intimidator, my stomach didn't drop at all. Goldrush? Goldrush. Yeah, I think like you're in the creeps and everything like in my stomach. My parents oh, can't take me to ones because I refuse to ride anything. I won't ride roller coasters. Those stay up year round, though. I mean, that's probably the yeah. safest roller coaster. So <laughs> Way better than like the state fair rides you can pass on the interstate. Yeah. But you're like, hey, you see that guy that's like drinking back there in the back? He's the one that put this together. <laughs> <laughs> or you go up and buy a slingshot and see somebody flat slingshot. I, I, I love that also the same thing. Like when you see like the ride go by, you're just like, you see everything shaking, all that stuff, and you're like, this really was, this was assembled off the back of the trailer as fast as possible yeah. by the people that like, they're literally like, they're like, okay, well, we'll take you with us. That would be the payment. Ride that or something like an engineer design that stays up. <laughs> Um, all right, I'm going to squeeze in here the rational function. Yeah, okay, right. I was about to say, because once you're done, I'm going to take a picture of that mighty kind of stuff. All right, and this is f of x equals 1 over x. All right. The rational function is kind of interesting, and this, this is stupid. Know that right now. This is stupid. But it worked like for a class like two, three years ago. And this also works because of my age. They knew, or at least half the class knew the song by Olivia Newton-John. Anyone know who that is? Uh, so if you sing it, I'll know it. I'm not going to names. I don't sing very well. Um, well she was, y'all know the very first Grease that has John Travolta in it? Yes. 
Um, I guess good job. Um, she was the one lady that played Sandy. Yeah. She had like one song that was like, let's get physical in the 80s, 80s, 70s, late 70s, early 80s. Anyway, it was like a hor horrible, horrible aerobic song. In the video, she's there, like with her legs spread, and she's doing like this number. And it got stuck in my head when I was young, like, um, let's get rational, rational. And I kind of saw went from there because she's doing like this thing, and like she's going up to the different beast part. She's going like this and like that. And she's doing that back and forth thing. And that's what it is. You guys can't see it on the video because you can't see below my waist, and I'm like a full figure math teacher. So I have that piece and then that piece. And it kind of goes with the motion of that song. If you watch the video, it's horrible. You just do a Olivia Newton John, let's get physical. You people know how to do Google searches. It's a horrible video. It is so dated to the early, early 80s when like Why was you were in show. Because the bell's gonna ring. And we'll talk about symmetry tomorrow. Can't even get to the video. What is that? What is that? Yeah. 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 Ye